You have found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episode, we're going to ask the question, if the Bulls do make the playing tournament, who's going to be more important to the team's success, Nikola Vucevic or DeMar DeRozan? We're also going to talk about Zach Levine being nominated for Eastern Conference Player of the Week, and Javante Green may have seen some progress. We're going to get to all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked on Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Iboda. Iboda gives you cash on, back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Right now, Iboda is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Iboda by using the, the code Locked On when you register. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Iboda app. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central. And while I would love to come to you guys and talk about some Chicago Bears topics, this is a Bulls show. And so we have to talk <laughs> about the Bulls. <laughs> so, uh, Pat, uh, I, I, pre-record meeting, I, I asked this question, and I want to talk about it here. If the Bulls do make the play, and right now they're slated, they're back in the 10th spot, if they are able to hold on to that, or God forbid if they're able to increase – and actually make the playing tournament. We know Zach Levine's been on the tear. We know how important he is to the offense. But the dynamic has kind of changed on the second fiddle, I, I think. Like, uh, we've seen, and, and sometimes Nikola Vucevic perform better than DeMar and kind of be prioritized a little bit more than DeMar in certain games as well. So I'm going to throw this question to you, Pat. In the play-in, who do you think is going to be the one who gets who is the second most important? Is it going to be Nikola Vucevic, or is it going to be DeMar DeRozan? I think... I think it- it's a it's a twofold scenario, right? Like mm. for the entire game, you need Vooch to be the guy. You yeah. need Vooch to be your your number two, right? Because he's the guy that is the big that can facilitate the basketball really well. He's the guy, right? That is the the big that can stretch the floor, space out the defense. He has more of an ability to space out the defense than Demar Derozan does. He can get to the bucket, finish back to the basket, right? He's the guy that is the other versatile. Whatever you need me to do, I can do, guy. But if it comes down to the fourth quarter and I need 10 points real quick, DeMar DeRozan's that guy, right? So mm-hmm. it, it's kind of – not to say it's it's an easy pick to, to say Vooch, but I, I think that, right, like it just depends on what situations you put yourself in. If you don't want to be in a situation where you need DeMar DeRozan to be the most important player, you need Vooch to be your best player throughout the entire game outside of Zach Levine. Um but when we get to those moments where you need somebody to step up for you, I want to have DeMar DeRozan on my team. And I love the way that you put that because it is a balance, right? That's why the, the three players are our best three players. And I do think especially, you know, you're going to want to see DeMar facilitate a little bit more. We've already talked heavily about how that does change the dynamic of the team. But when Zach Levine is on the bench, and like you said, we need Vooch consistently throughout the game with his rebounding, yeah. his scoring, things like that. But, like, when, when Zach needs – a rest and the game is tight or even God forbid, if Zach is in the game and the game gets close, DeMar DeRozan's ability to get to the free throw line uh, is, is hugely important. And it's going to be important because as we know, with playoff basketball, the game starts slowing down. And when it does slow down, a player like DeMar DeRozan and what he's able to do in the half court is well is, is needed. I, I think you, I know we have this stigma now with isolation basketball because of the last two seasons. And I understand it, but there is a world in which isolation basketball does help you yeah. in, when the game does slow down. Yeah. And, and I think, right. Like the real, the real thing that you also have to look at is the teams that you're matching up with, right? Like is, is there a team in right now where we are right to play and we're probably heading toward the play in the playoffs would be nice. The bulls still have an opportunity to get there if they keep winning basketball games the way that they have, but we're probably heading towards being in the play-in. Are there any teams in the play-in right now that you look at and you say that maybe that opinion changes based on the the players on that team? I'd say Atlanta, for sure. You think that's a a game where you need to see DeMar be your second-best player? I think so. I think with 
what we've seen in the games that we played played against Atlanta, especially in with what they have is bigs down there. Yeah. Not to say that it takes Vooch completely out the game, but I do think that it makes scoring a little bit more difficult for Vooch. And I think we at that point we rely a little bit more heavily on Demar, in my opinion. Yeah. Looking at the other teams right now in the playing area, uh Miami. Bam and Bam and Vooch kind of cancel each other out there at times. Like it, Bam's way better defensively, and what Bam's able to do with that and passing wise, we'll see. And then the Toronto Raptors, I don't I, with Poto now. Maybe maybe in that series as well, Demarc becomes important. But we've seen Toronto probably better than any other team that we face here recently. They give Demar fits, and I think that length just bothers Demar, but it does Vooch as well. What what about you looking at those teams that we just talked about? To me, the, the the team is Miami, right? Okay. Because I think Zach Levine offsets a lot of what happens versus the Hawks, what happens versus the Raptors, with how he's been scoring. Mm -hmm. But when I look at Miami, right, like that's a team where, uh, listen, uh, Jimmy Butler's still an amazing defender. Jimmy Butler's going to make Zach Levine's life really, really hard if he's trying to go after it. Or DeMar DeRozan's, but probably with what the play of late, right? Like probably Zach Levine, because uh, you don't want Tyler Hero matching up on him all night. That'll be a tough night for you. But... um I think that's the game where, right, like you need the guy that defense doesn't matter. And mm -hmm. more times than not, when DeMar DeRozan is going one-on-one, -on -one, when he is cooking, when he is playing well, defense in front of him doesn't matter. You put a hand up, doesn't matter. You you step, try and step through and foul him, doesn't matter, and one. Uh, you try to slow him down, going to the bucket, doesn't matter, got the lay, and one. You know what I mean? So I think that Miami's probably the team that I would see the most, also because I think Miami's the team that probably clamps down defensively the best. That's fair. That's fair. Um, Raptors in there as well, right? But Raptors is just a ton of length. I mean, it's literally like AK is just looking at Toronto, and he's like, man, I wish I was in Toronto right now. You know what I mean? Like it's Captain just, Carney. Captain Carney. <laughs> he wants long arms. <laughs> But nah, I just uh I, I feel like Miami will be the toughest team. And I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Like there's a lot of pressure on the Bulls to move up, not just for like what the fan stigma is. Mm. But man, if you gotta beat two of these teams, dog, like I am not confident that we can. Whether with, with either of them playing as uh, I guess not full strength, right? Like if all three of them play, we can beat anybody. But, man, having to beat the Heat and the Raptors and having to beat the Heat and the Hawks, like, dog, we in a tough – because we we right now are in a situation where we have to play two playing we games, play right? two games, yep. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, I, I I would be a little bit nervous about that going into the play-in. Yeah, so technically right now what we do is that if, if the play-in started today, we'd be facing off against the – Heat, Toronto right? Raptors, I believe. Raptors right? first, yeah. It is like that. It's like seven, eight, and then like eight or eight so, it, plays yeah, so the winner of nine and ten. No, yeah. So, so whoever wins between seven and eight, they go into the playoffs. Right. The loser between seven and eight faces the winner between nine and ten. That winner then goes off to be in the play playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's weird. It's it's a weird setup. But and I, what's I, your prize for winning both of those games? The Milwaukee the first round. <laughs> <laughs> which is wild uh but you you know I, I i like what you said as far as like having to get through two teams like if the bulls can get to that eighth or seventh spot and win that first game it would be mm -hmm. huge for the bulls i don't know how much faith i have in it um i've said it before i'm really probably at my most pessimistic about the bulls right now um and their chances but it, we, i know that they have the capability to i want to be clear i say that i know that they can I just have so much doubt on if the team is going to be able to sustain the level of heart needed to get to that point. But we'll know. Like the next two, the next seven games that we have, are, are, that's that's the tough part right there. We got the yeah. ninth toughest schedule left in the NBA, and mainly it's in these next two weeks. After that, I'm sure it goes down to us having like the fifth easiest schedule. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it fluctuates so much, man. I mean, we got Kings, Timberwolves, Heat, Sixers twice, right with Embiid. So. Yeah. Uh, we did split with the Sixers, and and the one time we lost, I believe, was with Embiid. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I I don't know, dog. Like I I'm just I I'm riding out the rest of this season on every day, and I look at Demar Derozan and his with his contribution. I'm looking at Vooch and his contribution, Zach Levine and his contribution, and I love that we're turning it on now, but it's just like, where's this been? Where's this been all year? Where why is it? Why
Why did it take an angry small Chicagoan to come in and for you to play this like was you? Say. It was in you LA heart. playing with LeBron. You know I mean? That's like, where it was. <laughs> that's such an issue, dog. But it, yeah, I digress, man. Yeah. Next up, we're going to talk about Zach Levine and him being a finalist for the NBA Player of the Week. But before we do that, I got to talk to you guys about our sponsor, uh, Ebola. Uh, our iBoda, I'm sorry. Uh, we're always throwing away money at something. Kids, kid, kid school supplies, a new house project, the list goes on. It's time to stop spending your hard-earned money without getting anything in return. You can earn cash back on every shopping trip. Uh, iBoda gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. Uh, either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average iBoda user earns up to 120 a year in real cash cash back that could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing that that game you've been dying to go to or that fancy dinner you've been craving a typical basket of groceries was over $50 more expensive at the end of 2022 than the beginning of the year due to inflation. You can earn two and a half times that in cash back from Ibota or even more depending on how much you use Ibota. Ibota gives you real cash back, not points. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibota, you get real cash back that you can uh, that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start Start with Ibota, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibota is offering our listeners $5 for trying Ibota by using the code LOCKED, uh, locked when you register. Uh, just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibota app and use code LOCKED. That's Ibota, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google uh, Play or Apple Store and use code LOCKED. All right, Pat. One thing I wish that we can save on is three-point shooters with Ibota, but they don't have that listed on there. Um, <laughs> that, would, that would do some help. It, Just a uh, discount. Can I get a discount on <laughs> Yeah, can we get a discount on three-point shooter? Uh, well, Zach Levine has been on the tear. We've talked about it. We've It's been heavily publicized. He's playing the best basketball, really, he's played in probably about a year. Yeah. Um, and he was a finalist to be the East, Easter Conference Player of the Week. Uh, Pat, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I think he should be a finalist for Easter Conference Player of the Month. I think that Zach Levine's been mm, balling out of his cool. mind. Um, and the 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 part of this is it seems like it's something that's actually finally sustainable, right? We've seen Zach Levine have those kind of up and down games throughout the entire season. He'll put up 35 one night, he'll put up six the next. He'll be like, what the heck am I looking at, right? Like, how's, how's my highest paid player putting up 11 points in a game? Uh, but he was being asked to do a lot more. He was being asked to facilitate the basketball. He's been asked to move the ball around, been asked to be the the uh, the starting point of this offense, both with passing and with scoring, right? Um, and now that that's been taken away from him, I mean, and, and you could tell the numbers relate to it. Over his last five games, 35 points a game, four rebounds, three assists, one steal per game, shooting 56% from the field, 51% from the three-point line. Now, I don't expect these numbers to carry on through the rest of the season, right? He's going on a hot streak, three-point shooting. That definitely helps the field goal percentage. We know that Zach Levine's normally around like a 35 to 38% three-point shooter. Um, but but the part that gets you the most excited, the part that makes you feel like it, it's sustainable is his focus on just getting to the bucket, just doing what he can to get himself going offensively. And and ju honestly, just taking more shots, it it almost feels like kid has said this a couple of times over on the breeze. But doesn't it seem like they've asked Demar Derozan to take a back seat? Yes, they've. It seems like they've asked Demar Derozan to be like, "Hey, you remember what you did with the Spurs? That's what we need here." Yeah, and and you've seen the result of it in Zach's game. So I think Zach absolutely deserves to be Easter Conference Player of the Week. Uh, I think he's in contention for Easter Conference Player of the Month, and I'm hoping that this isn't just a month thing, right? Like, listen, we all know about good marches. You know what I mean? Like, we all know about those good 30 days of a player. Hey, Nico Miritich, where you at? Uh, Bobby Bobby Portis was talking about you the other day. You know what I mean? What, what you heard? Uh, you know, Larry Markinen had a hot month for us. Um, I mean, like... Larry's month was February? Was that what Larry's month was? Larry's month was always a February. Okay. Um, I mean, like, th there's always that guy that just has that month that, like, sells us on one more season of it. Mm. And hopefully this isn't this isn't just that. Hopefully this is something that's able to carry into the playoffs. The Bulls are able to take advantage of it. And, I mean, listen, when a player gets on a hot streak like this, 
you can carry it a lot farther than we think. This is a fact. And that's hopefully what we're able to do. And and that's what I've been more so looking at. This is Zach Levine getting hot at the right time here. Um, and then hopefully going on a playing stretch or whatever it ends up being. But I hope that this allows him to remember to remind himself of what he can and needs to do for this team coming. If he starts off the season with this type of hot streak, yeah, that's what we need from Zach Levine next season. So I don't want to take away from it. Just focus on, you know, next season or anything. It's great to see him playing like this. I think it's, you can tell he's trusting his body again. I don't even think the injury is even in his mind anymore. The way he's cutting, yeah. the way he's going to the, to the basket, absorbing contact, finishing around the rim. That's what we need. The three point shooting from Zach is, is great. Don't get me wrong. And we need it on this team for a team that needs tons of three point shooting. But when Zach and his ability to use his quick first step and get to the lane, um, it's just, it's special. And it, it builds his confidence with his shooting as well. We've seen Zach Levine go back to taking the three-point shots three feet from behind the three-point line and drain them. So I, 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 Zach definitely deserves to be in that conversation for Eastern Conference Player of the Week, the month, everything. He's had a great month of March so far. And um, 13 days into March, we got, we're got we almost halfway there. And hopefully that he can finish it out. And I would love to see Zach Levine get Player of the Month here. I think I think the biggest thing th that I'm looking at with Zach now is, or the biggest change I should say that I'm seeing with Zach Levine now, is like you talked about his ability to absorb content going to the contact going to the bucket. Um, we're we're not seeing him go up scared on people, right? We're seeing him to the point now where he's rising up. And people are like, "Hey, let me make this business decision because you're not putting me on a poster. I'm gonna get up out the way." We haven't yeah. seen Zach rise up fearlessly in a long time. It's true. And we haven't seen him put himself in those positions. Remember, he had the thumb injury this season as well. Yet again, uh, another thumb injury this season as well. So um, it, it's good to see him feeling confident in his body for once. And good to see him um, playing like he's confident in, in, in his body going, going out there on a play-in, play-out basis, man. So I, I just I see him as such a different player now. His, his offensive game is, is so much more aggressive. It, it's so much more uh, uh, consistent as well. And he's not just settling for shots. It seems like um, as a scorer, the IQ is a lot higher maybe than as a facilitator. Yeah, oh, for sure. And, and, and I mean, and you've said it, uh, how different Zach looks with a point guard, but also like he's just, he's, he's making better decisions overall. Um, and, and you, the turnovers are down a little bit as well. So um, that's what you want to see from Zach. I, Zach just seems like he's playing a game that comes more natural to him rather than trying to force himself to be in a certain role. And it's paying off for the Bulls. It's paying off for him, and we need to see it continue. Oh, yeah. And and listen, there's there's so much more that I still need to see from him and from this team. But the fact that it's almost like he's taking on finally being a leader of this team. And we've talked about that all year. It's been a, Hey man, like who are the leaders on your team? Who are the guys that are going to go out and make an impact? Who are the guys that are going to come out and, and be the focal point on at, at some point? It, it, it really feels like Zach Levine is really taking on. And maybe it's because Pat Bev is telling them a lot of stuff, putting them in a lot of good mm -hmm. visit, but it really feels like he's just like, Hey, listen, this team is going to go as far as I take it. So I'm gonna take it somewhere. That's fair. That's fair. How far, like, and how far he takes it is is up to him. At this at this point in time, now as great as Zach has been playing, we still do need the role players to step up more consistently. Yeah. Um, and I hope that we see that continue. I hope like everybody just seems to be settling into the role a little bit better now. Like with with everything that's going with Pat Bev and and, and Zach scoring and Demar doing more f facilitating, just seems like everybody's getting into that role and kind of setting that uh, setting into those spots. Yeah. And if the Bulls do have some postseason play coming on, I think that's going to benefit them in that area as well. That's hope so, man. I mean, listen, at this point, it's just it's so sad, right? Like it's just like. Every time we get to the 10th seed now, it's just, you just, that's, that's how you feel right there. You know what I mean? That's how you feel. It was like, I, I just, I hope to God that we're not sitting here talking about the season coming to an end in 14 days. You know what I mean? Like that, and that's, that's the sad part of where we are. Like we're really talking about like, Hey man, Zach's playing great night. And, and we could absolutely be out of the play in tournament if we lose two games. Mm hmm. Now, it's just the fact that we're in the playing tournament. At this point, people are just like, whatever, just keep going. I'm not ready for basketball to end. Bears football is a long way away. <laughs> <laughs>
But hey, man, if you were uh, if you were a betting man and uh, you were betting on Zach Levine to win Easter Conference Player of the Week, you might be right. But you can try all that out over at FanDuel.com. The midway point of the NBA season has passed, but now is still the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars as a bonus bet if your first bet doesn't win just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe secure and super easy to use then you can bet on everything from money line to points scored and threes drained uh plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with a same game parlay no lie my barber literally while I'm sitting in the chair will just ask me questions I'm thinking he's just talking about, hey, like, who do you think is going to make more threes tonight? Who do you think is going to get a double-double tonight? This man's been putting in parlays on me for, like, two months now. (laughs) That's funny. I don't even know if he's making money off of it. Like, are you winning, dog? Like, can I get a cut? Anyway, (laughs) don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Pat. So, last topic of the day, Javante Green. Billy Donovan is giving us an update, saying Javante is doing a little bit more practice, still not being a participant at practice. Are you giving it any chance that Javante returns for the play-in race for the Chicago Bulls team? Are you kind of like me? I I have taken the stance now. I don't expect to see Javante back this season. I think the real question is, even if we do, what is he helping? Hmm, That's a great one. That's a great question. Are you are you more confident in, in him being a six two uh, power forward than uh, than Alice Crusoe being a six four <laughs> power forward? Uh, like what's Javante, he helping Javante on this team two? at this point? I think Javante. Nah, Javante might be. T- he might be six four. He might be same height as Caruso. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's listed as six five. He's not six five. He's, he's definitely not six five. There's no. Way. He's not six five. He that Kobe White six five. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. That's funny. Um, he's six five with the CDs. He be selling out the back of his trunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, bro, you know that man is selling bootleg something <laughs> in them jumpsuits every time. That's funny. Here's what I'll say: is that I do think, regardless of the position, that Javante can absolutely help help the team, but he has to be 100. percent a hobble Javante Green because most of his game is built off energy, athleticism, and just and just doing crazy and things. And if, dunks. Yeah, and dunks. If he's not able to do that, he's not 100% and able to do that, I just don't know if Javante makes the impact because, like, he's not a great shooter, and that's yeah. not a slide on him. He's just not. That's not his game. He's not an amazing passer. He defends. He gives you energy, and he, and he dunks on people. Pat Beverly, minus the dunk. Exactly. So, like, I would love to see him out. I'm not going to lie. I would love to see what Pat Bev getting out in the transition with a Javante Green would do. I would oh, love yeah. to see that. But Also, angriest backcourt in the NBA by far. Oh, by far. But <laughs> but uh, because it's a knee injury and he had a debridement surgery and we've already got our own PTSD in regards to that, no. if Javante comes back this season, I don't know if we get the Javante Green that we're used to seeing. And then at that point, is he hurting more than he's helping is the question. I, I, I think here's the tough part. Mm-hmm. Your team's healthy right now, and you're heading into the same into the playoffs, possibly playing the same team with the same problems. You're going in there with six, four power forwards and not enough three-point shooting. And right, like all these things that we thought that we were going to be able to address in the offseason, all these things that look like they were addressed when we got to the beginning of the season, right? We were excited about how Goran Dragic could shoot the three ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he got hurt because he was an old man. You know what I mean? Like it, there was there was just so much stuff that that we thought were we were getting with AK better rebounding, better size with with Andre Drummond being signed. And I mean, most of it, Billy Donovan just didn't use. Most of it just wasn't fit into his scheme, into his game plan. And now at the end of the season, we're going back to what we were in last year that we know is a recipe for us to lose. It's facts. So I don't know, man. I just, I, I look at what the Chicago Bulls can do going into the play in, hopefully making the playoffs. Um, probably playing the Bucks in the first round. 
And a Javante Green's just not a name that I see being super impactful for us just because of the players that we have. I mean, the, the Caruso is basically a the, the white Javante Green, right? Uh, Pat Bev is just the I can't dunk Javante Green. Um, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, the, we've got these guys on the team. I, I, I just don't see where Javante fits into that. I, I, I can see DJJ fitting back into this lineup before I see Javante back in it. That's a great point. And we haven't seen very much of DJJ. Uh, no. I, I, you know what? I honestly don't disagree with that at all. I would also rather have him starting at power forward if we're going to keep doing this experiment than Alex Caruso. I'm Bro, just... it's not going to happen. At this point, Billy Donovan has his new shiny toy. He's not giving it up for any. My pressure. That's what he, he's literally coddling and rubbing uh, the, the, the lineup of having Alex Caruso. My precious. That's what he's saying. <laughs> he's not taking it away. It's uh, just the headband he's rubbing up. Just the headband. <laughs> it's... Ah! it's just the headband. <laughs> Billy Donovan walking around with one of, one of the Alex Caruso. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody photoshopped that. Um, but, hey, that's it, bro. You got anything left for the I day? don't have nothing left, bro. It was a slow news day, man. We hope y'all enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the episode. As always, follow me on everything at Locked on Bulls or at Pat the Designer. You can follow us both on everything at Locked on Bulls. Y'all already know what it is, man. It is what it is. You guys can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen today. Now, for your second listen, go check out Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls. We out, y'all. Peace. Peace.